Well, I appreciate all you guys being here. Um, big, big week for us last week, and we had a number of games bunched in together, two at home and one on the road, and all three competitive games, um, you know, starting with the SMU overtime loss and then bouncing back and, and beating a very good Tulane team in overtime. Said it several times, can't say it enough, a, a big thank you to our fans uh, for, for being here. What an environment. It was absolutely electric and truly a sixth man to propel us to victory. I mean, they were absolutely there when, when we needed them. And, um, of course, you, you couple that with the, the pizza party and, the, and, the, and what Andalini's did. Really, really cool. And then, of course, our Legends Night, too. And, and that's, I think, a very special thing to honor the people that have worn this jersey here before. There's such great tradition here. So to, to have that type of environment in, in a great win was very, very special. And then turned it around quickly to go to East Carolina. Played really good basketball for a while. Um, on both ends, and then defensively, I, I felt like I used the term to our team. I felt like we fatigued. Uh, we fatigued from the the physicality, from just the uh, their presence on the backboards, and just didn't make enough plays down the stretch to to come away with that win. How do you feel about Sunday games? I did the first one this year, right? I did you have one earlier in the year? I can't, I'm trying to remember back. Anyway. You, I don't pay attention, TJ. Really, I mean, it's <laughs> what day of the week it is. I mean, I, you know, we we just we just plan our days and and, and when we're going to practice. But uh, you know, of course, I know there's there's NFL going on on Sunday, and, and people are passionate about that. But but we were always aiming for for people to be uh, lined up for Tulsa men's basketball. And like I said, they are such an important part of what we do. Propelled us to victory in a big way, and hope that they'll come out again. I know the schedule changes every week, it seems, but does it change at all having to play on a Sunday as opposed to maybe a Saturday? I know you have a little bit of time off here between, but just curious on that. It's a good question. So in my um, my previous school, we, we were very much the same. We played Thursday, Saturday in league almost every every week. And so you had a, a routine, a schedule of what Monday would be like and then Tuesday, Wednesday. Whereas here, you know, you could play on a Tuesday, you could play on a Wednesday, it could be Saturday, Sunday. So got to be flexible with that. Um, so for us, we had yesterday off. Uh, many of us took in the women's game in the afternoon. And then today, we, we've got an opportunity to really focus on what happened in our East Carolina game, turn it into a cleanup day and a skill day, and then get focused on Memphis in the next two days. So every week is a little bit different. We've got to be flexible. Sometimes it's a quick turnaround. Sometimes you got a little bit more time. With Memphis being a team, kind of, it's kind of a brand in American basketball, and they look like they're headed to the NCAA tournament. Do you get a sense that your guys are maybe a little bit more energy in practice this week, knowing that that's the opponent coming to town? Well, we, we talk all the time about how every game counts as one. But of course, the, Memphis has been a mainstay in this league and a very good team in this league. And they're also a, a team that plays a very unique style. So. I will give our guys a ton of credit. I, I feel like their attention, that they're focused. The we talk about being everyday guys and focusing on the next play. They've been really good with that all year, and we just got to continue with that. And uh, we'll get started this week, but I certainly expect them to have great energy and great focus as we prepare for this one. And with that, that East Carolina game, it, it was tight there, late second half. With so many tight games, is there? an opportunity to look at different aspects of each of those games to say, okay, our team did this here, our team didn't do this here? Or do you, is it one collective, you kind of have tunnel vision and look for one aspect of it? We talk, we've got game goals, and we there's different markers that we look to meet. Some are really relative to every single game. Others are a little bit different. Some teams don't crash the glass. Um, so our rebounding rate should be higher. Some teams, like East Carolina, crash it really, really hard, very Houston-like in that, and we needed to do a better job, and I believe that was really a, a major factor in why we lost. The way Houston plays, they're going to look to turn us over in full-court pressure, and this is going to be a much more of a game of, of making the right play rather than running plays. And so every game is different. I know you've all heard me say that. I think that's why this game is the greatest game there is. You got to play offense and defense, and every game's a little bit different. But we, we look at what are the things that impact winning, and what are the things that we can control most, 
and try to get better at each game. third double-double in the last five games. is What is he doing that's made him so effective kind of recently? And is this the type of player that you expected to get when he transferred here? But Brian's greatest strength is his consistency. He, he is an everyday guy. Practice, games, uh, his mood, his energy level, it's, it is uncanny. It's, it's like Groundhog Day. I mean, it's, it's like the same. And so... That, that is such a wonderful strength to have because we all know what we can count on. Now, that doesn't mean that he's scoring the exact number of points every day or the rebounds every day. People are keying in on him more. He's seen some double teams. But his focus, his attention, his willingness to try to improve has been tremendous. And uh, he's got such timing. Is he the strongest guy? He's strong. But there's other guys stronger. Is he the most athletic guy? Well, he's athletic, but there's other guys that bounce higher. But he's got such a timing to keep the ball alive, and he's got really good hands, and he pursues it all the time. And that, that we appreciate so much of him, and he's been very, very productive because of it. Uh, Frank Haynes, <clears throat> excuse me, is making his return back here. I mean, what's your history with him? And then, you know, coming back in this building, what kind of reception do you think he'll receive? Well, I think he's owed a great reception here. Um, he, he's a tremendous coach and person. I've had, gotten to know him uh, over the years. Um, I was on the staff that followed him at the University of Miami as well. So, you know, a tremendous, tremendous person and coach here and certainly expect a, a great warm welcome to Coach Haith. Um, we actually scrimmaged his team uh, here at Tulsa several years ago when I was at Louisiana Tech. We met at TCU and scrimmaged in the preseason. So I know he's got nothing but great things to say about this community and this university. Going back to when you were hired, did you reach out to him at all about, you know, coming here? after he was let go? Yeah, I, I spoke to him not long after coming here. And again, glowingly about the community and the university and uh, great respect in coaching. There, it's really a small fraternity. I know you all know that. There, there's really not that many of us. And we come across each other all the time, not only at the Final Four at our national convention, but out on the road recruiting. And and um, again, he, he's we've got great respect for one another and, and, and certainly uh, appreciate just his stature in, in, in coaching, but in his contributions here. With Memphis, I mean, you know the types of teams that Coach Hardaway puts together. They're kind of a special bunch, scrappy bunch. What do you anticipate this weekend with them? We 100% we know we're going to get a, a very long, athletic, and hard-playing team, a team with a lot of versatility and, and uh, skill sets that are very attacking. Uh, Kendrick Davis is a uh, leading scorer in the league. Um, he's, a, he's a guy that can – really scored in bunches, had some big nights over his career, and can do a number of different things, both score and assist. But the thing that we're absolutely most concerned with, and it's not new for anybody that plays them, is taking care of the basketball. And it's been something that we, we've worked very hard at. I was pleased the other night we only turned it over nine times. If we're able to get close to that, that'd be, that, that, that puts, us in the, puts us in position to, ha to have a great game. They do it so differently, however, than everybody else. Their full court pressure, their half court pressure, their trapping, uh, doing it both full court and then half court at the same time is very, very unique. And you don't see it very many places. And it's going to be challenging to simulate. Uh, we're going to do it with six and seven guys on the floor at the time and just try to create as much chaos as possible because that's what we're going to see on Sunday. You've played two games on Sunday this season already. Sorry, that was a, that was a bad question earlier. What do you you mentioned the small fraternity? Do you know Penny Hardaway at all? Do you have a relationship with him at all? Have you gone back or maybe crossed paths with him at any, any point? Don't don't know him very well. Um, have, have not played against his teams. We actually prepared to play them one time. We were uh, in the in the COVID bubble type year when we played in the NIT a few years ago, and all relegated to the same place in Frisco. We were uh, potentially going to play. You know if. Uh, in that tournament, so we, we but we were in the same hotel. Certainly said hello, um, but don't don't know him as well. Uh, you and Kendrick's averaging about twenty one for him. Can you just talk about him and what kind of what makes him so effective and the challenges that he kind of can present to your defense? He he has tremendous change of direction and speed, and it's it's really. The, the, his ability to burst and stop and change and then step back and shoot. I mean, he shoots 
with incredible range. I mean, you just watch some of their games. Um, so you, you've got to your, – your catch point, your pickup point's got to be deep because he'll just dribble up and pull and make it with great percentage. But then you do that, it's extending your defense, and now he can wiggle by you. And it's, it's 100% that three-level score that people love to talk about. And he can, he can beat you by himself, scoring. And then once you start to take some things away, you trap him, you do different things to try to get the ball out of his hands, he can make the play. He'll scoot around you, and then he'll make the right play. He, he is a very, very good basketball player. But how is recruiting gone? I know that you're trying to get some local kids, and then you know you've stretched it out by getting some regional, other state kids as well. But how is recruiting going? We're, we're very encouraged by just the uh, the response that we've gotten. Uh, the three kids that we signed in the fall, we're really excited about. All three are having very good years. We recruiting is we, we try to recruit and will recruit three classes at a time. You recruit the the current senior class the junior class and the sophomore class that you can't really offer yet, but we, we always will have an inside out approach. Uh, one of our coaches was in the gym of a sophomore yesterday in this region. Uh, one of our other coaches at another location. So we're, we're always looking to have a very large list and then spring recruiting now is all about then figuring out your needs, but, but we don't want to all of a sudden jump in and be reactive. We want to be very proactive evaluate, know who's good. We have a saying it's always easier to get out than it is to get in. And so uh, we're, we're encouraged. A lot of our guys watch our games. They've been to some of our games. And, you know, we're where we are record-wise is not indicative of where we are from a passion standpoint of our fans. We're, we're in the upper half of our league in attendance. Uh, there is a passion that you see that jumps out on the video. Uh, of course, we're strategic in the things that we send, our social media department and everything that we're doing. So there's an energy growing here, and it's we're seeing that in recruiting as well. Uh, just following up on that, how, how many more spots do you have available and how many do you see adding, uh, you know, heading into next season? Yeah, you know, and I think that's so much part of the spring. It's important to be proactive because spring recruiting is, is a little bit of that unknown, and, and you just want to be prepared. So we, we – We'll keep an active list at every single position. Uh, it, and recruiting is really an everyday thing for us. Every day in evaluating, uh, I tell our staff all the time, it's their job to add and my job to subtract and figure out like where we are on our depth chart, watch video every day on guys, and just so we can keep an active list so that we're prepared uh, when anything comes our way. Coach, as analytic as you are, um, you know, I know you know this stat or have known this stat for a lot of times, but a few years ago they added a column on the stat sheet, which was FD. took me about four games to figure out what that meant. It was next to F, which is fouls, but it was fouls drawn. And it seems like Kendrick Davis may be one of the best at drawing fouls. You know, uh, uh, the young man at, uh, at Tulane is really good at that, uh, you know, as well. How do you guard a guy – and not foul him. I mean, how do you guard a guy like him? Because he draws, seems like, nine, ten fouls a game and gets to the line. You're right, Bruce. It is a great stat. And I'm, I'm, I'm so happy with the evolution of how our stat sheet looks because there was a lot of things that we used to do in-house that now we can just get at halftime in the game. Fouls drawn. Of course, you have your fouls committed. That's always been there. But plus, minus, those types of things. But fouls drawn is a, is a sneaky good stat. Uh, I believe the other day Anthony Pritchard drew nine fouls. And so fouling, we talk about first on your individual defense. We talk all the time about not only guarding with your feet, but catching people with your chest and how you need to show your hands to swipe up rather than down. Um, anytime you swipe down and the ball pops up, it's typically called a foul. Um, but Kendrick is one that puts so much pressure on your defense, and he draws fouls on his shots. He draws fouls on his drives and people trying to get back in front. We've got to do an exceptional job of, one, being able to set our defense every time and understand that not one guy is going to guard him alone. It's one guy guarding the ball, but then four guys absolutely assisting in that, that defense. And we've got to do it in a very clean way, in proper gaps. We can't get stretched because you give him a little bit of a seam, he's like a tailback, and he finds the openings. And then it's you're running from behind, and to stop him, you're 
almost really trying to follow him. And we're not a shot blocking team, so we've got to put our chest on front of the ball all the time. Thanks, guys. Thank you, everybody.